Holy Spirit, dwell in me. Touch my eyes that I might see all your goodness, grace, and power. Stay Good morning, brothers and sisters. So, miss you very much. I'll be glad when we can get back together and, and praise the Lord. And call out his name and we can say, I love you. So I'm going to the Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, I humble myself before your throne of grace, thanking you for the blessing that you have stored up on us, thanking you for waking us up this morning and to see this day that you made. We thank you. We thank you for all you've done. Most of all, we thank you for Jesus who came into this world to suffer, shed his blood, purchased the church so we could all come in and obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for all you've done. Thank you for letting us be alive, still clothed in our right mind. We thank you. Thank you for our help and strength, Father. Bless all of those who are sick and afflicted, Father. Restore their health to them, Father, if it's your will. Back to the approach of heaven. Father, thank you for being so good to us, better than we've been to ourselves. Thank you for letting us be able to say thank you. Amen. Father, we thank you for your, everything you've done, and we thank you. And those who don't know you, Father, I hope they come to themselves and look at your creation all around them and see what you made. And look at themselves, Father. They didn't make themselves. See how you got them moving in. The limbs, the arms, and they can see. And look up into your heaven, Father. Thank you for all of this, Father. And, and we thank Brother Charlotte, the message that he's going to bring, that we can add it to our lives and tell others about you. And we hope that this day go okay and everything be pleasing yes. in your sight, Lord. And I ask this prayer and praise your holy name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So I want to ditto what has been said. Thank you, Brother Felton, for the prayer. God has blessed us and we are certainly appreciative to what is going on. So many people are down and it's continuing to rise. And so I say to all of you, be careful and listen to those who are giving us warnings as to what we need to do in order to be safe. God is good and he's good to us all the time. Amen. This morning I want to talk to you from Matthew chapter 9. And if you have your Bibles, I ask that you would go to chapter 9 in Matthew and we're going to read uh, uh, from verse 18 down through verse number uh, 26. While he spake uh, these words unto them, Behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hands upon her, and she shall live. Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. Behold, a woman who had been diseased with an issue of blood. Twelve years she came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be well. But Jesus turned about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, 
be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee well. The one who was made well from that very hour. When Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the musicals and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they lost him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, meaning told to get out, the Bible says that he went in and took her by her hand, and the maid arose, and the flame of this went abroad, and the people rejoiced. I want to talk to you this morning from a subject, and I trust you will follow me as best as you can. My subject is going to be something better than medicine. Something better than medicine. When I think about what has happened, church members, backsliders, on church men and women. I speak to you today because I believe that there are many people in this world that don't want to have to live eternally in hell. And so our plea is to try and get you to see the importance of becoming a child of God in the churches of Christ and living the life so that you can make heaven your home. It's always good to be with those who are willing to help you to better understand what God's will is. And so we're saying to you now, we want to help, not hurt. We're concerned about you knowing what God will put up with and what God will not put up with. We invite you to get to know the Lord Jesus Christ. He will know how to deal with with all of our problems. Our nation is faced with an epidemic that we can't understand and don't really know what to do and how to solve the problem. God is standing by just waiting for us to contact him and talk to him about our problems. Listen to what he says. He says, call and I will answer. And that's all I want us to do is to know we have somebody to call on. And we are confused. Our government is confused. Everybody is saying different things. And so I'm saying to us, we can talk to our Father in heaven. Because those of us who know, Jesus said when he was here, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Brothers and sisters, we need to know that Christ is still the light of the world. But then he said to us, when I'm gone, you are the light of the world. We can hear people. We feel. And most of us that are present feel other people when they're hurting. And we try to do all that we can to make them feel better. In the book of James, we learn this in James chapter 4, if you want to go there. The Bible says, from whence cometh wars and fighting among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust, that war in your members. The devil is sharp. He get in people and cause them to do things that they really don't want to do. But I say to us, he say, you lust and you have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, and yet you have not because you ask not. But we have a God who said, ask, and it shall be given. See, you shall find, knock on the door, and it shall be opened unto you. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss, that you may consume it in your lust. James 4, chapter 1, a verse. James 4, verses 1 through 3. 
Let me just say this. No man can serve two masters. We have to decide who we want to follow. We have to decide what we're going to do. Because we cannot serve God and the devil at the same time. You got to hold on to one and let go of the other. But if you want to go to heaven and have peace with God, we're going to have to grab God's hand and hold on to his and let go of the devil's hand. And whether you let go of it or not, if you try to let go, he'll do something else to hold you with him. He's smart. But I say to us, we've got God. We've got God. Now, I'll be to my subject in a minute. I want you to see some things I think we all need to see. Since we can't serve God and mammon, we need to understand this. James is saying to those in chapter 4, he said, Ye adulterers and you adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Lord have mercy. Whoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. So we have to know what's going on. Now in our lesson we read about two, two people for sure. Two people that wanted some help that particular day. First of all, there was this ruler who had come, his daughter had died. And he wanted the Lord to come and lay his hand on his daughter. Jesus looked at the man and said to the man, she's all right. She's sleeping. And that's kind of like maybe being in a coma. There's no movement. They don't feel. They don't worry about anything. So everybody around them thought she's dead. But God knows what's going on. And so Jesus went with the man to his house. And as he was going, that's what we're going to be talking about in a little bit. As he was going to the man's house, the Bible said there came a woman, and we'll talk about her in a minute, that had issue of blood for 12 long years. And I'm trusting that we can say something to help us to realize that God wants as many folk to come to heaven that will obey his will. Obedience is very important. And we cannot just feel like, I'm good enough. I'm just as good as anybody else. No, that's not the way you weigh yourself. You can't look at me and say, I weigh about the same as you. No, that's not the way God's going to deal with it. He knows everything that we have done in this life. And so, he went in and touched that girl and told her to arise. She got up. Everybody that Jesus told them to get out, they laughed him to scum. Don't play with Jesus. When God asks us to do something, do every single thing he asks us to do. And I'm saying to us, I'm saying to us that we need to trust God rather than man. Brother Charles and Lord and I are good friends. And we often pray with each other or for each other. But the thing about it, I don't want him praying for me thinking that he's doing what God is going to do. We have to talk to God. And if his life is right, God is going to move and do what he needs to do. That's all God is asking us to do is trust him. I have a lot of confidence in him because I watched the life that he lived. And others, you can see people and, and understand folk like that. I hope you don't mind me calling your name. But, but I'm saying we got to know those that we labor with and try to understand what's going on. Now let's look at this lady. I'm talking about the subject, something better than medicine. Something better than medicine. Now... I want you to see what's happening. This woman, she didn't come up with the subject, but I, I thought about this. But look, we don't know how many times she had been to a doctor's office. We don't know how much she had to spend to see 
those doctors out of those 12 years. We do know this much. She spent all that she had. Isn't that strange? We have to go through all of that and we know Jesus. And all we have to do is to talk to God in the, in the name of Jesus Christ. And Christ said, if we ask the Father in his name, he will see that we get what we're asking for. Amen. That's the God. That's something better than medicine. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. we, we don't have to worry about it. Uh, prescriptions are great. But I, it's no telling how many prescriptions this lady had to buy along with having to pay the doctor for his services. Mm -hmm. Along with having to try to get to where the doctor was. Money is being spent. She got to stay somewhere, but she saw many doctors that could not help her. Mm -hmm. But something, God always makes it possible for us to see more than what we see. Mm -hmm. You see, if you trust God, he'll fix it where you can see where you need to be. I'm saying to those who just take anything that somebody says, I'm not asking you just to take what I'm saying. It's written in the Bible. And in Matthew chapter 9 and verses 20 through verse 22, it's something taught there that we can see and understand that God knows what he is doing. He's the one that had it put there. Behold the woman which was diseased with an issue of blood for 12 years came behind Jesus. Now let me just talk about this woman. If you had a disease like this, you were not even supposed to be out in public. Mm -hmm. So you know what I'm saying? She had to sneak around to get to where she needed to go. But she spent all of the money and used all the time she could going from doctor to doctor to doctor to doctor. Well, they didn't help her. And so she determined Jesus is in this town. So she went to that city and she said within herself, I don't have to have him to touch me, but oh, if I could just but touch the hem of his garment, I know I will be whole. Isn't that wonderful to have that thought about the Savior of the world? Look at her faith. I'm saying to folk out there now that's worrying about this pandemic that's bothering us now. Don't worry about it. Talk to God about it. Mm -hmm. I ask him every night, even though I wear my mask and I wear my gloves, I ask him every night, God, watch over me. Bless me if it's your will. And I'm willing for him to let his will go on. If it's your will, allow me to get up tomorrow morning. That's what we... None of us want to leave our families behind. All of us that's got children would love to see our children grow up and do well for themselves. We don't want them down all the time and it bothers us. It makes us weak. It makes us nervous. It makes us tired. It makes us lose a lot of sleep ourselves worrying about our children. But we have a God that can help us overcome what's going on in our life. If I could but just touch the hem of his garment. But Jesus knew she had been touched. Look at the man I'm asking you all to take on as your friend, as your father, and uh, your brother in Christ. And his father is willing to give whatever you ask in his son's name. Give it to us. Give it to us. And so what happens, we look up, and the Bible tells us that. Jesus turned and looked at the woman when she touched the hem of his garment. Now in some other versions, some of them say the disciples start saying, you see all the people around you, Jesus? You can't help but be touched. But Jesus said, somebody touched me, for I felt the virtue. They just, she touched his garment, and what he was wearing, the virtue of the Lord went out through his garment to her. Don't you want to serve somebody with that kind of power? Mm -hmm. Something better than medicine. We think we are
doing all right. But things happen to us to make us go back to accepting and knowing that God is in control of all of our lives. Sometimes we feel like we are the only people with a problem. Hello, it's more than you that's got a problem. And church, sometimes you have to forget about your problem and worry about somebody else. What do you think, how do you think Jesus felt when he told the people to get out of the, the, the man's house and just leave there and they start laughing at him and scorning him and all the things that he has come to do for us and they left him to scorn. Clifton, if you asked, came in to help me with something and I started laughing, <laughs> he thinks he can do that. <laughs> but that's going to bother you because you're not Jesus. But Jesus had a mission. And his mission was to help you and I to see he's there to help us. She wasn't supposed to be in public. And I, I want to keep this before you. She wasn't supposed to be in public, but for 12 years, she went to see doctor after doctor after doctor, and we don't know how many, and I'm not going to speculate as to how many doctors she had to see, but i tell you one thing, she found in her own heart this hemorrhage that she had been having, nobody's prescriptions could help her. Plus, she had to pay for those. And I say to you today, Christ is better than medicine. And I want all of us to hold him there. Prescriptions are needed in some things, and sometimes we have to use them. But I want all the saints and friends there who know about Jesus to know that you need to call on the Lord because he knows what you need. Amen. And I tell you, if God does not hear sinners' prayers, then you need to become a part of the Lord's family. Mm -hmm. And when you pray to Him, you can get what you need. Mm -hmm. Now I want to, I want to change directions for a while. You see, I talked to a, a young person this past week on the telephone. It, it may still be on there. I don't think I erased it. If I did, I'm sorry. But this young lady called and says, look, I, I know I'm not a Christian. I know I don't go to church. And the lady told me several years ago, I just don't do church. I don't, I don't, I don't like organized religion. <laughs> well, you, uh, people do bars and beer taverns, and that's not organized. But they have fights in there, and all I'm simply saying is that you won't do organized religion. God said, let everything be done decently and in order. That's organize yourselves. And so I'm saying, this young man was talking to me and he was saying that, that uh, you know, I don't think that after the girl had talked, I don't think that God will receive us and do anything for us because we've been doing drugs for over 10 years. And I don't know whether or not we would be any good service to God. I said, well, you don't have the hands of Christ. If Christ can raise the dead, if Christ can remove the leprosy from people, if he can give you legs to walk on that have never stood up and walked anywhere, God can deal with whatever problems you have. So narcotics don't bother. Opium is not going to hold you back. Cocaine is not going to keep you away from God if you want to get to him. Heroin will not stop you from coming toward God if that's what you want to make a change in your life. But you got to make up your mind. You have to make up your own mind that you don't want to do this anymore and be faithful to him because he, he is willing to help us. That's why he came. People that are depressed grab for a pill when they get nervous and start shaking. There's something better than pills and medicine. Some people have lost jobs because of drug habits. Some people have lost jobs because they go in and when they have to take that test to see if you're on drugs, 
It shows that you've been doing something you should not have been doing. And even though it might have been a depressant that you took, the whole point is when they look at your record and it shows that you've been doing something, you'll lose a good job. People have lost good paying jobs. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. We need to understand that when God said, he meant it. Matthew chapter 6 and 33, seek ye first, what? The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. And what? And his righteousness. And all of these things that you need to guide you into a better life, God will see that you get it. Mankind must take the first move, however. You can't wait for God to move first. You've already laid his word out, and that's why Preachers and teachers and elders and deacons have been called upon to take the <coughs> excuse me, take the word into the world. We must do it. In Psalm 105. And and the verse number four, glory ye in his holy name. Isn't that something? Glory in his holy name. Let your heart of them that rejoice that seek the Lord, but glory in his name. Seek the Lord. Seek his strength. Seek his face evermore. Every day, wake up talking to God because he's been good to hold you up through the night. Hosea chapter 10 and verse number 12. I got to look at this one. Sow to yourselves in righteousness and reap in mercy. Sow to yourselves in righteousness and weep and reap, reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon us. Oh, we need it. If you plow wickedness, you have reaped iniquity. Mm -hmm. If you have eaten the fruits of lies, <laughs> boy, isn't that something? Because thou didst trust, didst trust in thy way and not in his way. We must always hold on to God. Come in is God is never far from us. He's never far from us. He's right there. If you need him this minute, he doesn't have to get on a plane and fly over here. God can speak the word. And people we love can get salvation because God loves us dearly. And he's willing. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, listen now, shall be saved. Now don't. Don't you folk that don't understand that. Everybody can't call on the name of the Lord. But if God does not hear a sinner's prayer, then you need to get yourself situated where you can call on the name of the Lord. What is it, John 5 and 39, for we know that God heareth not sinners, but he that be a worshiper of God and do his will, him he will hear. This does not mean that a person can just blurt it out. Oh God! Come into my heart. That's not the way it's done. No. You got to obey the gospel of Christ. Go down in that water or grave of baptism. Have your sins washed away. Then you can call on the Lord. In Acts chapter 22, 16, you remember Paul went down there and he says, Now why tarest thou? Arise, be baptized, and wash away your sins. That's all we are asking you to do, and that's why that we tell people all the time, it's more than just walking up there, putting your finger in some water, and sprinkling it on somebody. We have to be baptized into Christ to reach his water. And I'm saying to all of us, as long as we stick with God, as long as we hold on to God's unchanging hands, everything is going to be all right because God knows exactly what we need. So I say again, if you need Jesus, you have to take him as he is. He's not going to change himself just because of you or because of me. He's going to do what he wants to do, or he needs to do rather, because he knows you and I need his help. So I'm saying to all of us, it's going to be tough, but God is going to show us what he is made of. And all we have to do is to hold on to his hand. And then... Let me tell you something. To find that God is doing things that we don't really understand. People can talk and act crazy, but God still loves us. He's a loving God. <clears throat> Peter would say 
He's not willing that any man should perish, but that all men come to repentance. And I'm saying to all of us, as long as we stay with him, as long as we stay with God, everything is going to be all right. Stay with God, live with God, and do those things that God has called upon us to do. And remember for sure, remember for sure, that God takes good care of all of his people. So I'm saying to you today, if you are a delinquent member, you need to come home. Because this pandemic can get hold to you and take everything out of your life. You need to get with it. You need to do the things pleasing and acceptable in the sight of God. And know this for sure. Know this for sure. You don't want to die. And hear God say, depart from me. You all remember the lady, those uh, ten virgins? And five was wise and five were foolish. And they wanted the wise to give them some oil to go in their lamps. That comes a time when you have to say no to somebody. If they ask you to do something that's wrong, you have to say no. If folk tell you, I oh, don't go to church today. Uh, uh, we came to visit you. Take them to service with you. And do what God wants you to do. And they may come up to understand the word of God. Let me close with this, this warning. Jesus Christ left his home in glory came down here to die on the cross to give his life a ransom for you and for me. I was a sinner. I did many things contrary to the teachings of Christ. But don't you worry about it. All we have to do is to trust God. Obey him, repent of sins that we've committed and ask God to bless us and bless us real good so that we can do all the things that he wants us to do. Let me ask you, are you in sin and want to get rid of your sin? Repentance comes up here. People will come down the aisle and they'll think by coming down the aisle, that's repentance. It ought to have already been worked out in your heart. Up here, not down here, but up here. You ought to have already made up your mind, you know, the Bible is right come up and do what's pleasing and acceptable in the sight of God. So I encourage you to give up those things that you've been doing wrong. And remember, you're going to face it. The Bible said, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account of the things that we have done in this world, whether good or whether bad. We must stand there and give an account. And he knows. And God's record is never, he need no eraser. You don't have to blot out anything but your name. Because if you're not living right, you blot your name out of the land of the book of life. Will you pray with me? God, I thank you. You've been so good. And I pray that you will continue to bless us to stay on the right track. Stay in the narrow way. Do the things that's pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Guide us, keep us, and thank you for allowing us and the brothers here to come and help us to get the word out again. Guide us all and keep us. For it's in Christ's name we ask these blessings. Amen. We come to the time to partake of the Lord's broken body and shed his blood. I will be reading from Matthew 26, chapter 26 through the 29th verse. I will be reading from the King James Version. And it reads as follows. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you that I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Let us pray.
Father God, we thank you for this blessed opportunity. Yes. To come and partake of the broken body and the shedded blood of your dear son, Jesus. We thank you, and we ask that you would bless both the cup and the bread, and those that partake of it, that they do it with a clear mind and a pure heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It's time we come to you to take up that, which would be the offering, the offering that we would give back to the Lord, the portion that belongs to him. It's a love offering, and we trust, trust and pray to God that you would do it as you do it with love in your heart. I will be sharing with you from the 16th chapter of the 1st Corinthian letter. 1st Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. And it reads as follows. Now concerning the collection for the saints. As I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, that every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him that there be no gatherings when I come. Let us pray. God Almighty, we thank you for the blessed opportunity to be able to give back a portion of that that you allowed us to be able to receive. We thank you for our jobs and thank you for the benefits that we do have coming into our homes. Yes. That at any time that we shall receive anything that we would feel obligated, concerned about the church and give back cheerfully Amen. that someone who doesn't have will be able to have. Thank you, Heavenly Father, again for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to thank Brother Shaw for a wonderful message. I stand before you at this time uh, to read our special prayer requests, and they are as follows. Uh, please continue prayer for Brother Pleasant. Um, he had come down with pneumonia and he was having some chest pains. So we are asking you all to please pray uh, for him. Uh, please pray for uh, Sister Judy Malvern and her family. Yes. Um, her uh, brother passed away, uh, the one who lives in Louisiana. So we're asking you all to please pray for uh, Sister Malvern and her entire family and all of those that were affected by this loss. Amen. We are asking you all to please keep the Patterson family and all those that were connected to Brother William Patterson uh, and his young daughter. Uh, please keep them in your prayers uh, with the tragedy that had happened uh, this past week. We're asking you all to please continue to pray for Brother uh, Carlos uh, Patterson as well uh, in Denison. Uh, but please continue to pray for that whole entire family. Uh, the daughter is uh, doing better at this time. She was moved from ICU and is now in a regular room. And so that is a blessing, and she is talking. And so we're, we're thanking God uh, for that. But please keep that entire family uh, in your prayers at this time. Mm -hmm. At this time, I will pray for those that are on our special prayer uh, list, and then Brother Brookter will come and close us out. Let us bow. Lord, we thank you so much for, first of all, just being with us and blessing us with a day that was not promised to us. We're going to ask you, Heavenly Father, that you be with us, that we may use this day as an opportunity to uh, share your love with someone else. Mm -hmm. Dear God, I ask you to please be with those that are on our special prayer list, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, be with those that are sick. Be with those that have lost loved ones. And we're just asking you to be with those that are emotionally, dear Heavenly Father, dealing with things uh, right now as we deal with this uh, world. Mm -hmm. Just be with us. Bless them, dear Heavenly Father. Give them the strength that they need uh, right now. Give the, them the emotional strength uh, that they need. Uh, give them the spiritual strength that they need. That they may make it, dear Heavenly Father, through these hardships mm -hmm. that we are going through. Be with those that are sick and bless them. Uh, physically, heal their physical bodies, dear Heavenly Father, and help them to return to their normal portion of health and strength. Mm -hmm. Please, God, be with those that uh, lost loved ones and just Amen. help them, uh, dear Heavenly Father, at this time. Amen. Allow us, dear Heavenly Father, who, who are brothers and sisters of these uh, loved ones who have lost loved ones, to reach out to them and uh, encourage them and call them and let them know uh, that we love them and that we are praying for them. 
Now go with us, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, watch over us and allow us to do those things yes. which are pleasing in your sight. And as we make decisions, dear Heavenly Father, uh, as it pertains to uh, our worship services and, and the different things that we are trying to accomplish for you, uh, please, Lord, give us wisdom, not only here at Grand Avenue, but across uh, this land and country as we all are dealing with this pandemic. Amen. Watch over us, guide us, and protect us. For us in Christ Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, brother and sister. We hope that when we get together, we all be on one accord yes, and praising the Lord. So I'm going to go to the Heavenly Father now. And I, I just thank Him for everything. Amen. So, Heavenly Father, I thank you. But let us come together in your name, Father. Thank you. Let us be able to be in our right mind and serve you. And we give everything to you. We take nothing, Father. We right. thank you for your precious Son. You yes, loved us so much. When we were yet sinners, he died for us. Father, take us to our safely, to our home. Let us find our loved one doing okay. All right. Father, thank you for being so good to us. You've been so good, Father. We can't thank you enough. And we all the blessing that you give us, Father, we, we won't be able to count them. We just thank you. And take us through this day and have all my brothers and sisters, Father, let them be in good spirit. Even if they're sick, Father, bring them through it. Give them strength to go through it, Father. Yes. And lift them up, Father. Let them know, say, that you are with them and you'll never leave, Father. And bless Brother Shaw with the message that he brought us. Oh, Lord, have mercy. We can take it through our life forever and be our God and take us through this day. And this be my prayer, and I ask it all in your holy name. In Jesus' name, this is my prayer. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, dwell in